Here's a simple telephone intercom system using two telephones. Pick up one phone, the other phone beeps, you pick it up, you talk, nothing to it. Pick up the other one, this one beeps, you pick it up, you talk. Real simple. I'm sure if you've looked at telephone intercoms, you've come across this circuit where you've got a battery, a resistor hooked to two telephones, you pick up the phones, you talk. It's so simple, but what's lacking is the signaling. How does the other person know to come to the phone and talk to you? This circuit has that. You pick it up, the other phone beeps. Pick up this phone, that phone beeps. You pick them both up, you're talking. Real simple. The circuitry at each station is the same. I have a 9-volt battery, a little bit of circuitry consisting of a buzzer, an electrolytic capacitor, a diode, and a resistor. On this one, I'm used to use a little pad per hole prototype board and just soldered the parts down. Small electronic buzzer. This one's rated to operate from 3 to 12 volts. I actually probably don't get over 6 volts, but this one has a pretty wide operating range, diode, resistor, and capacitor. And on the other station, I actually just assembled the components inside the modular block. Pop the cover off here. Have the buzzer and the capacitor soldered right across the buzzer terminals, and I have the diode that's just bridged between these two screws. And then I put the resistor across here, and I wear my line across those two screws, put the battery across these two screws, so it all fits right inside this modular connector. So I connect up the battery, plug in the phone, and I have my line runs to the other station. Now, of course, you'd have much more wire in here because you're going to have one phone in the kitchen, and the other one in the workshop, or one's in the house, one's out in the barn, or one's in the bunker, and one's at the forward command post. I don't know what you're going to do with this thing, but it's like a set of field phones. you got two phones, and you can call from one phone to the other. Or maybe you just hook two of them together to entertain the grandkids when they come to visit, so they leave you alone for a while. Whatever you want to do. The circuit's really quite simple. Okay, and here's our schematic. This is the wiring at one station, and both stations are identical. We have the telephone, 9-volt battery, 68-ohm resistor at a quarter watt, could be a half watt, whatever's handy. The resistance isn't real critical. 68 is a good minimum value, could be higher. Uh, 1N4001 rectifier could be a 4002, 4003, it's not really critical. Electronic buzzer, uh, I used one uh, I bought from Mauser Electronics, rated 3 to 12 volts. I've used some cheap ones from China, it's really not a critical thing. But it needs to operate at a low voltage and draw very little current. 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, rated 16 volts. Again, this is not critical, 10 microfarad would probably work just fine. Um, the reason for this is that when we are signaling the other station, let's say we take this phone off the hook, we have the battery making a path through the phone, through the battery, through the resistor, out onto the line. So it isn't just the battery being fed to the other station to drive the buzzer. We have the resistance of the telephone and the resistor and the line, and then the resistor at the other station where we're having power come into the other station to drive the buzzer. And with all that resistance in there, the buzzer is actually trying to draw out power in spurts, and we need this as sort of a buffer. So you do need the capacitor across the buzzer. The exact value of the capacitor I can't say because I don't know the characteristics of your buzzer, but 22 microfarads should be plenty. So you build both stations exactly like this, but when you feed the line to the other station, you need to swap the two wires so that this wire goes to that wire of the other station, this wire goes to that wire of the other station. So just as they go along, they need to swap. If you hook it up straight across, it just doesn't work. It won't hurt anything, but it just doesn't work. As far as how much line you can put in there, um, a thousand feet or so of Cat5 would probably not be a problem. If you're trying to do a mile or something, you're probably going to need to increase the voltage. 9 volt battery, the current draw on this particular setup, I measured it, when both phones are picked up and talking, with fresh batteries, which are putting out 9 volts, or just a hair over, was about 28 milliamps, and that'll vary with different phones. Uh, but you're going to be somewhere in the ballpark. Ideally, you want 20 milliamps or so. 15 will work, 30 will work, but of course, the more current you draw, the faster the battery runs down. 
but initially at 30 milliamps and then as the batteries wear down the current will drop down to maybe 20 and it'll still work acceptably at that. Um, this arrangement right here with the initial draw of 28 milliamps or so is going to last a dozen hours on a 9 volt battery and still have good volume and still be working. Uh, if you want to suck the batteries down completely dead, you probably get maybe as much as 20 hours out of it. Although the volume is going to drop between the stations and then the signaling volume is also going to go down some. If you want it to last a little longer, you can get a holder, something similar to this, that holds AA cells. Now this one happens to hold 8, but if you had one that held 6 AA cells, that would give you 9 volts. If you were going to be running a long line here that had a lot of resistance, say you were trying to go a mile or something, you'd probably want to up the voltage. Um, going to a holder like this with 8 AA cells would be initially 12 volts, and that would be about right for trying to do a mile line. And uh, the capacity of the AA cells would be about four times that of the 9 volt battery, so it would actually be a little cheaper in the long run to go that way. If you're really going to use this thing heavy, if you're going to be on this a lot, uh, I'd go to D cells, six D cells, or using lantern batteries, um, you know, something big like that. D cells have 25 times the capacity of, of the little cells they use in a 9 volt battery. So if this thing was used really heavy, I'd go that route. But in this case, you know, if it's just something where you're calling down to the workshop to find out when dinner's going to be, and it's a 30 second call, you made four calls a day, 365 days, you'd get a year out of this thing before you had to replace the batteries at each end. So that's really uh, pretty economical for something that just gets light duty. But like I say, if you need to, you can go to bigger cells and get a longer battery life. And that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it.